This is a Texas Instruments TI-55 handheld calculator. I recently acquired this calculator. Production of this calculator began in 1977. And like all of the calculators of its day, it had a rechargeable battery pack. I'll just pop that open. It looks like this. These battery packs contain two nickel cadmium batteries and they were notorious for leaking. The batteries inside of this battery pack had both leaked very badly and essentially destroyed everything inside. After a valiant attempt at reviving it, I was, I was unable to repair it. The way that this battery pack connects to the calculator is through this three pin connector right here. It can only go in one way and it connects like so. Now the calculator also has an AC charger and the AC charger plugs into the battery pack like so and then the battery pack in turn plugs into the calculator. The power supply puts out a 5.7 volt AC. There's nothing inside of here except for a transformer. The battery pack acts as the rectifier. So if the battery pack has gone bad, then you cannot run this calculator off of the AC power supply. At the same time that the TI-55 was in production, Texas Instruments also made the TI-30. These two calculators are quite similar physically. The TI-30 was considered to be an economy calculator, whereas the TI-55 was more of a premium calculator. Now the TI-30 also has a battery pack that is nearly identical to the battery pack to the TI-55. The battery pack to the TI-55 is called the BP-7 and the one to the TI-30 is called the BP-8. These battery packs are identical except for the way that they connect to the calculator. The BP-7 has the proprietary 3-pin connector, whereas the BP-8 has a standard 9-volt type connector. And correspondingly within the calculator, it also has a 9-volt type connector. The reason that this was done is so that this inexpensive calculator could also be run by an inexpensive 9-volt battery. This is one of the ways that they reduce the cost of this calculator. So with the TI-30, you had an option of either an inexpensive 9-volt battery or a more expensive rechargeable battery pack. The 9-volt option is not available in the TI-55. So the way that this battery pack works is there is two rechargeable nickel-cadmium batteries, which in series produce 2.4 volts. There's a circuit board in this battery pack which boosts the 2.4 volt DC signal up to 9 volts. It is possible to replace this proprietary 3-pin connector with a standard 9-volt connector and therefore run the TI-55 off of a 9-volt battery. Since my battery pack has leaked badly and it's no longer usable, that seems to be the only option to get this calculator running. So we're going to open up this calculator and take a look. Opening up the calculator is quite easy, but, but it's not exactly the way you would expect. There are three sets of teeth here, here, and here that sort of in interlace. There's a latch on the upper side which hooks underneath these teeth on the lower side. Because this is all matte black, it's kind of hard to see. Shine a little light on it here. So we have this one tooth here coming from the back side and these two teeth here coming from the front side. You need to push this forward so that this tooth gets out from under these teeth. Okay, I got the first one pried up. See, it's opened up a little bit on the side here. Go for the second one. Now it's opened up a little bit more, and now the third one there. All three of those are pried up. And you got some teeth down here. You just have to sort of you have to sort of pull it this way in order to release it. Okay, this is all that's on the inside of this thing. Not much there at all matrix of keys and a small circuit board. So now we need to get this piece out. I'm just going to pop up some of these little prongs here. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six tabs holding this in. I'm going to slide it down a little bit and out it should come. Now uh, something to keep in mind here. 
between the physical keys and the keyboard, there's this sheet of styrofoam. Now this is over 40 years old and it's pretty well disintegrated. Now all the keys are held in by gravity at this point. You want to keep the front face of the calculator facing downward. So gravity's holding the keys in. If you flip this thing over, all these keys are going to come spilling out everywhere. Now this switch is held in by a couple of little tabs on either side. If you can just bend it back just a little bit. And out it comes. Now here's our calculator. Basically, the entire calculator is on a single chip. And that's how they got the prices down on these things. Earlier calculators, you would have seen lots of discrete components. It's all been consolidated into a single chip. It is interesting the similarity between how the TI-30 is constructed and how the TI-55 is constructed. Exactly the same button matrix and a very similar system board. Flipping them over. On this TI-30, as you can see, we've had serious battery spill and corrosion of these pins. I used this board for spare parts. I removed the buttons from here and used them someplace else. But anyway, here we have again the similarity between the two. Now, both calculators have all the electronics essentially on a single chip. Well, the chip in the TI-55 is quite a bit larger than the TI-30. Now, the TI-30 does have some additional functions. In addition to that, it does have some memory to hold small programs. Also, the TI-30 has nine digits, and the TI-55 has 12 digits. But the manufacturing of the two is very similar. Now, here is where our power supply cable hooks in, just two solder points. One thing to note, very important about this connector is the red and the black are the reverse of what you would expect. The black is the positive and the red is the negative. Keep that in mind. As long as I have got this whole thing apart and exposed, I'm going to use a little contact cleaner on this switch. Feels a little bit stiff. Now you can purchase these nine volt connectors very easily and cheaply. I bought a whole bunch of them here. Got like a bag of 10 from some supplier in China. I don't think I paid more than $2 for it. Okay, so now I can solder this in. Rather than pulling this one out, why don't I just piggyback one on top of the other? Okay, I've got that soldered in now. I basically wrap the ends of one set of wires around where the other set solders into the board. Now I have two power supply connectors. Okay, I'm just going to go over this one more time just to make sure there's no confusion. On the original three pin battery pack plug, the red is negative and the black is positive. Now on the nine volt socket, the red is positive and the black is negative. So the way I have this soldered, on this point, I've got the red line from the proprietary three pin connector and the black wire from the 9 volt connector soldered to the same point. And I've got the black line from the proprietary 3 pin connector and the red line from the 9 volt connector soldered to the same point. On the other side of the board, that's the negative and that's the positive for both lines. And we'll just test it out. We'll plug in our 9 volt. Okay, throw our switch and aha, uh -huh, look at that. It appears like we have a working calculator. So let's put it all back together again now. Now I have the 9 volt connector so that I can run my TI 55 off a 9 volt battery, just like the TI 30. I could also run it off a TI 30 battery pack if one were to become available. But by keeping the second connector, I could also run it off a TI-55 battery cable if that became available. So for right now, I'm just going to run it off the 9-volt battery. Plug her in. Everything works. Excellent. Now that we have replaced the battery pack with a 9-volt battery, how do we cover the back? If you've completely given up on the battery pack and you're not going to try to rebuild it or anything, you can open up the battery pack.
and you can use the top lid of the battery pack as the back cover for your calculator. And it works just fine. Now, in the case of my battery pack, I have removed the leaking batteries. They used to sit right here. I just removed them. There's really no point in hanging on to those. And this is the circuit board, which I made a valiant attempt at trying to repair. In the end, I was unable to. It's just been too damaged. That chip right there, which sort of runs everything, that DC to DC converter chip, that chip appears to have failed. That chip really is not available. This is such an old chip, and it's really an obsolete chip, and nobody really sells it anymore. Now, I am not going to take this route. I'm not going to split the thing and just use this and throw the rest away. I'm going to hang on to the rest of this. Someday I may try again to repair this thing. I'm just going to snap it all back together. Now, as far as using this calculator, I'm not going to use this calculator. This calculator is a museum piece at this point. Why would you use a calculator like this anyway when you can buy something like this today for probably $10 or so? It has more functions, has a multi-line display, and runs on solar power and doesn't ever need batteries. In fact, this particular calculator I bought at a local thrift store for, would you believe it, 25 cents. So for this, this is just a museum piece for my collection of calculators. However, if I ever do want to run it, I can run it because now I have a 9-volt battery socket that I can plug in a 9-volt battery whenever I want. So the lack of a battery pack is no longer a problem. And I can just use the battery pack itself as the cover. And I made that second set of cables long enough to where I can get this completely out of the way. And there we are, completely covered. So in summary, if you have one of these venerable old TI-55 calculators and it's died because of a bad battery pack and you have no way of running it, you can solder in a 9-volt battery socket and plug in a 9-volt battery and get it running just as if it was a TI-30 and you'll be back in business. And that's it.